Okay, so for this, you'll probably want to use MacJeb's uh, Smart ASS. Okay, throttle up, SAS is on, ignition. Remember, they take time to spool up and launch. Well, shouldn't be too much of a surprise that's balanced since we did everything exactly like the real space shuttle. I'm going to manually try and turn or roll first. And you should pretty turn, uh, pretty much turn vigorously with the space shuttle. So let's go heading 90, roll 180, pitch 75 right now. Let's see if it can handle that. Mostly the shuttle was controlled by the gimbling of the SRBs at this point. Keep an eye on the pitch though. We just made a pretty wild turn there very optimistic sort of thing. You should turn more aggressively than this with the shuttle. That was because I was managing the roll. I'll try and show how to do it properly after this. We're really hitting the limit on the pitch right now though. The booster is separated at about 47 kilometers. It depends on the actual load in the shuttle, but you can use that as a reference, and that will be at 2 minutes and three, se uh, 3 seconds, and the boosters should read about 400 kilonewtons at that point. So we'll pin that, and we separate when they are at 400 kilonewtons. Now right now we have 1981 configuration on those boosters, so there's probably a configuration if you right click on them that will change their stats. So this is not too bad, we're getting about the right height. We might be even, well we are a bit steep because I was a bit steep. We should be turning more aggressively, so we're getting higher than we ought to. Two, three, so the thrust is even less than it ought to have been. Actually the separation was not too bad. I didn't really see the separatrons do anything, but they definitely did. Pitch is pretty good right now. Now, I must emphasize that this is the first time I've tried, and I might have tried making a Mark III shuttle in realism overhaul maybe many, many, many years ago, but I'm not sure. And I didn't mock this up ahead of time. I just did built the shuttle as close to the real thing as I could, and it's working. <laughs> That's one of the easy things about realism overhaul. And like I said, there's certain aspects that might be harder, but and mostly it's the matter, amount of time it takes to do things. But a lot of things are easier because you can just copy the real thing. And even with these stockish parts being modified by realism overhaul, you can copy the real thing and it ends up doing about what it ought to. Re-entry is a whole other business though. Probably don't let the time to apoapsis get beyond one minute at this point. Keep in mind that the main engines are tilted 10 degrees, so even though we're at a 20 degree pitch here uh, above the horizon, uh, it's actually 30 degrees because of the engines. If you want to roll over, keep in mind that th then they're pointing down, and so you have to subtract 10 degrees. Still pretty well balanced. Now I'll go ahead and try to roll over here. Let's see if that works out for us. Just to demonstrate the balance of it. There were some inefficiencies during launch. We are carrying the maximum load for the shell right now. So now we've rolled over, we have to compensate for the fact that the engines are pitched down. And I almost got to a zero time to apoapsis there. We probably don't want to do that. Nah, they'll be fine. The SSMEs are powerful. I think the vertical stabilizer needs to be bigger. Now that we're outside, I think it definitely needs to be bigger. Wing, uh, the root part, this part, should be a little bit thinner. 
and this part a little bit further back. So that edge should be further back a bit. I didn't throttle down when it was supposed to throttle down earlier through max Q, but I'll throttle down here. Okay, we fell a little bit short because I had the inadequacies while launching. Uh, but we should be able to complete what we need to do. So the external tank will be demolished. It might be also a little bit heavy compared to the real thing. The residuals didn't seem too bad though. Okay, we didn't really need to do that right away. Uh, RCS. I forget which way it is. I think it's K that we want for the RCS. Well, we might as well go right away since we're pretty close to Apoapsis already here. So, OMS Burn 1. Looks like they messed up something else with the these engines. The plume is definitely not right. Maybe that would have been right, but no, I don't even think that with the larger size it would have been right. But anyway, it's just messed up, let's face it. We're using a lot of pitch authority though, so the angle of the OMS engines right now is not ideal. We should change them a little bit so that they don't use all this pitch. With the OMS engines as well, we have to pitch up to compensate for the fact that they are tilted. Unfortunately, as our fuel depletes, our center mass is going to move forward. And so I'm expecting to be nose heavy right now for re entry. We saw that our center of mass was pretty far forward before. So I do not expect that re-entry is going to be successful this time, but re-entry is the thing that you need to do a lot of testing for in the first place. So if you nail re-entry, you've got most of the job done. Keep in mind that we also have like six tons of avgas back here as ballast. And that is partly making the shuttle have the right mass overall, but it's not wonderful. <laughs> so we can hardly put more ballast right now. Okay, I think we'll round out the orbit as a one and a half hour orbit, which I normally do, and see if that helps us get back. Oh, I keep launching out of Brownsville. <laughs> we launched out of Brownsville instead of Cape Canaveral. Sorry about that. It doesn't make a whole lot of difference as far as what I was discussing, though. Oh, we haven't uh, started the fuel cells yet, so open up. Of course, you should action group the fuel cells, but let's just start fuel cell. There's also the oxygen, gener oxygen generator, and you might want to add more food, water, and oxygen to the cockpit if you want a longer mission. Hmm... The power draw of the shuttle shouldn't be this high. They've got this taking too much power. Now, of course, like I said, we should have 7.5 kilowatt fuel cells instead of 4.5, so we are underpowered right now. But the shuttle was able to operate with one of those. So... If they lost one, then it was judged to be time to come back down, because then if you lose another one, you're in a critical position, but... And ideally you'd have two for most operations, you know, they might have to turn some stuff off if they're only running on one fuel cell. But they, it shouldn't require as much, I mean, right now we have, what is it, 13.5? So right now it's requiring 14 kilowatts, which is two fuel cells worth, but it should be able to run with less than that. Okay, that's one and a half hours. And undock. Press I to move away from the payload. We're very realistic A2 tons, right? A3 tons, let's say, right now. And I don't know with this shuttle right now where exactly we should re enter. We're currently close to Australia for reference. Okay, 141 degrees east, let's say 142. Then I'll start the engines. And I generally keep it at zero here. 
So even though the OMS engines are tilted, in this case I keep it at zero. And we're going to go to a periapsis of negative 10 kilometers for this. Just to try that out. Okay, that'll be good enough. One thing we didn't do is put the RCS fuel in the nose. It does have volume for it, so if you want to do that, that's possible. But again, right now we're having trouble with it being too nose heavy. Maybe I should just not put this segment of the cargo bay in. Okay, it's turning and we'll be ready to re-enter. I mean, honestly, for the first launch of this particular shuttle, it's not too bad. It's probably gonna blow up soon, but it's not been too bad. Uh, it sounds like it's buffing the RCS a lot, but we're not using a whole lot of pitch right now. It's certainly using RCS. Well, it's increasing, increasingly using pitch to pitch up, as expected. We also have overheating on some of the RCS ports. And overheating on the cockpit, but that's why we're not going any lower than negative 10 kilometers. We should be gaining vertical speed soon, which will hopefully help us cool off. That's the plan anyway. 40 degrees is pretty standard as far as pitch is concerned. It's maxing out the pitch, but it is holding 40 so far. But as it depletes the propellant in the OMS pods, it's going to have more and more trouble holding pitch, so that's not good. Uh, it's going to be nighttime. I should have launched earlier in the day. We are overshooting, by the way. We're going to end up in the Gulf of Mexico because I started at Brownsville instead of Cape Canaveral. But, you know, the difference between the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic Ocean is sort of academic in this case. Yeah, I'm just, it's sort of holding 40 degrees pitch while maxing out. Of course, we're wasting fuel like this that could be used for a mission. We didn't do a very complex mission this time. We didn't dock with something or anything like that. Oh, uh, it overheated. Uh, not the actual failure I was expecting. I was not expecting the main cargo bay to overheat too much. But alas, okay, well, we're, we're not gonna deal with this demise. Oh, I don't have reverts. No, we need reverts, definitely. So to adjust for the fact that we just blew up, what we would do is that we would lift the periapsis up a bit. We went to negative 10 kilometers, so maybe we should go a little bit higher for the heat tolerance. We're, I'm not expecting anybody's going to try and tweak the heat tolerance, especially on the cargo bay, which is probably about right anyway. So we're going to try to go a little bit higher on the periapsis if we were going to try it again. This time, I'm just going to demonstrate how the launch probably ought to have worked. Uh, but yeah, lift up the periapsis, and of course we were overshooting our landing site, so we should start to retroburn earlier than the 142 degrees east that we started at. Um, if you sort of manage to have the shuttle survive, you can see where it ends up splashing down after holding its pitch at 40 degrees, and start to retroburn earlier by how far you overshoot or how much you undershoot. So you can adjust the re-entry point. So, um, let us go ahead and set this up. Pitch 90, roll, I think it's 90. And we're just, just gonna start with smart ASS this time. So ignition. And launch. I just wanna demonstrate the smart ASS version of this. Uh, actually 180 is what we want. I always do one degree at a time. So much more severe turn here. And then crawl down. And then throttle up.
Usually I would have KOS control the shuttle during launch, so I don't do it with Smart ASS very much. I think 30 is fine for now. Okay, booster set. Oh, and I think I'll avoid the immediate ignition of the OMS engines. That might be good. I don't think I'm getting particularly good results yet. I'll have to get more practice with this. But maybe our shuttle is suboptimal somehow. I suspect that the external tank might be a little bit heavy. I'll have to double check that. I didn't roll over this time, but I'll just stick to that. Okay, well, a little bit better, but not ideal. Okay, so optimizing this will take some effort, but for now, we have a surprisingly workable system in relatively few launches. And you don't need to have a whole bunch of mods <laughs> nose to nose with the external tank. You don't have to put a whole bunch of mods in in order to have a space shuttle with realism overhaul. And in fact, it's not that much harder to make a space shuttle in realism overhaul than it is to make it in stock. In fact, it could be easier because you could just copy the real thing. I, I think a lot of the reluctance of people taking up realism overhaul is because they think they have to install a whole bunch of mods or use a lot of parts that are foreign to them, uh, you know, and this this bewildering array of part mods. No, actually you could do quite a lot just with the stockish parts, the stock parts that are modified by Realism Overhaul, and you can even make a space shuttle with it. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.